Amazing. Okay, welcome everyone to the second of uh, Open Life Sciences uh, rehearsal calls for OLS2 for, uh, in preparation for graduation. So today we'll spend a little bit of time talking about feedback and how one gives feedback, uh, as well as actually spending some time in breakout rooms practicing for our final presentations next week and then giving some feedback on the presentations as we've seen them. So um, my first quick reminder or request is to go in Zoom and to actually just go and edit your name and add S if you're going to go into a spoken breakout room, W if, you're, you, if you would prefer a written breakout room, uh, or if you don't mind either, then you can always put S and W. And this just helps us sort out later when we're putting people into breakout rooms. Um, okay, I can see some of those S's and W's popping up. That's fantastic. I will continue. So Open Life Science has a code of conduct that applies when you're interacting with others um, within the auspices of Open Life Science. And as a general rule, that means that we ask that everyone treats each other with the respect uh, that you'd like to be treated. And if you at any point either experience or witness anything that you believe isn't in line with the code of conduct, you can report that by emailing team at openlifesci.org, which reaches myself, Malvika and Berenice, or you can email any of us individually. Our emails are, I believe, in the document so that you can, um, if you don't want to reach the whole team for any reason. Uh, I think that's just about everything from the kickoff. Uh, we have some nice questions uh, in the icebreaker. Slow is smooth and fast, take it one day at a time. Uh, if you want someone to do something for you, make it as easy as possible for them to do it. Uh, yes, this is such a good bit of advice. <laughs> um, we also have only way to run a marathon is one step at a time. That is so good, especially when you look back and see how many of those steps you have taken over time. Um, looking for the further forwards when you're struggling to help yourself, help someone else. That's a nice one. Don't eat yellow snow. Oh, God, no. Do not eat yellow snow. <laughs> uh, wear latex gloves when cutting jalapeno peppers. Yeah, I find actually a little bit of oil on your hand can do that too. Um, and then you just wash off the oil and I guess it takes off the capsicum pepper evilness as well. Um, and there is a lot of power in being the note taker. Yeah, okay, these are all great. Uh, if you have any more you'd like to add to these, please do. Um, whether they're deeply meaningful or whether it's more like the yellow snow or the peppers, they're all great. <laughs> uh, Malvika, do you want to kick off the feedback section? Yeah, uh, so we will, go, we will start this session by discussing a little bit about feedback. Uh, personally, we think feedback is a very important thing. I personally think it has helped me grow quite a lot. Um, I shared this in the morning as well that I have lived in Germany for 10 years and one of the things I really admired is how people were very straightforward at telling what did not work. It really helps you save so much time. So bring that practice also in your team, in your workplace, uh, but also be gentle about it. So a few things that we want to tell you is that it can be very hard to give or receive feedback when we don't really know how to do it. The second thing is also when people are not prepared for it, mm -hmm. feedback can come as surprise, which is not often a good kind of surprise. Uh, so therefore set ground rules and expectation. It's often useful to ask people, would you like some uh, feedback? Or if you require feedback, tell people that you need feedback. You can even be more helpful by telling them in what actual aspect they can help you by sharing feedback. One example is, that when I used to train, give workshops, uh, specifically the carpentries workshop, I would tell my co-trainers to tell me at the end of the day, how did my training go, where, where I can improve, and I could do that for them as well. So it's a, it's a really good, you know, good thing to share in terms of also trust building. So if you're on the HackMD, you can see this image, and I'm going to just share my screen without assuming that you all have had MD open. So this is this one, um, which is an excellent illustration about how to give feedback. So this kid tells his father, dad, that kid said my artwork sucked. 
dad is like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to teach him how a lesson. And now they actually teach the boy a lesson, which is about how to give feedback. So first is be positive, be specific, and give the next steps. A part of constructive feedback is to tell people where they can improve and how they can improve. Uh, telling somebody that, oh yeah, that isn't good, doesn't really tell them why it isn't good. Another thing is also tell them that the feedback is being shared about the content rather than the person themselves. Because often when we receive harsh feedback, even if they are not supposed to be directly uh, about us, we can take them personally and uh, we should uh, make sure that we communicate clearly that it's not really about you, it's about the pro product that we are building. For this session specifically, I would like you to use the uh, two by two paradigm. So this time I'm gonna try using control plus. Yeah, there it works. Uh, the two by two paradigm is that we have this table where you're going to look at the content of the presentation and how the delivery is done. You're going to write a positive feedback about both of them and the negative feedback. And when I say negative in context of feedback, it means constructive criticism, mostly where people can improve. So it's not really about attacking someone about, oh yeah, that thing is not good, uh, but really telling them why something did not work in the context of this training. Um, this two by two paradigm I have for, I've learned from the Carpentries instructor training where uh, we use this format also when we evaluate people when they demo their coding. So again, I'm not the only one who have a lot of uh, opinion about feedback. You all have experienced that and therefore we have a silent documenting uh, down here. We're going to take five minutes and share silently about why feedback is important. What happens when we don't give, give feedback? What happens when we only give critical feedback in areas of improvement? What happens if we only give praise and not so much about uh, areas for improvement? And finally, what does an effective feedback looks like to you? So keep it as personal feedback rather than how in the world general feedback looks like. What really works for you? Because we understand that feedback can vary from person to person. So with that, I'll stop talking and let's take five minutes to write down our thoughts.
Okay, I'm going to start summarizing, but I would also love for someone else to do that if they feel comfortable to. Uh, some of the some of the top comments I'm going to read. Let's start with that. So why is feedback important? It's important to learn if we don't know what our success and failure are. Um, definitely, I think one of the things we've we've discussed in open life science so many times um, is the imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome happens when we don't really know where we are at. So it's very useful to get feedback on that. To improve, uh, to be your best self and uh, to put forth your best effort in communication. Then what happens when we don't give feedback? It sends a message that we don't care, yeah. Uh, often feedback is a way to show how much you enjoy someone's work, how much you appreciate and encourage them. Um, then person, people are left not knowing whether there are issues they should address. We lose direction or move around in circles. Uh, we waste so much time, that's so true. Nothing gets improved, nobody learns anything. What happens if we only give critical feedback or areas of improvement? It can be demoralizing and uh, doesn't acknowledge the work that was done regardless of the quality. Uh, yeah, all the hidden work that we keep talking about that, that, that gets unacknowledged. People become overwhelmed, fear and anxiety kicks in so you don't share your work anymore. It discourages participation, it can be demotivating. And when you give only positive and praises, uh, people may think that they are amazing and nothing should be changed. Uh, the other way is that people will think, oh yeah, it doesn't matter at all. It's not helpful. No one learns anything and there's a risk people get overconfident of their own ability. Um, a lot of time you would see the other way around. People stop asking for feedback the next time if, we, if they think that you're not going to really tell them where to improve. It doesn't feel genuine. Um, and you become closed minded, not looking into how to make things better. So what does an effective feedback looks like? Um, would someone like to share by unmuting their mic? Um, I can share mine, I guess. Um, it takes into account how much time and resources the person has to actually implement any suggestions. So sharing the feedback along with uh, pointing out what kind of resources are needed. Oh, I meant more like they might say, oh, well, you need to redo all these things. But if the person doesn't have time to do that before some deadline, it's not really helpful. Mm. Absolutely. So there's one note that says constructive, not criticizing, that helps to formulate better decision to improve and increase performance. I would also say effective feedback looks like when it's been made clear what exactly, uh, what ex what specific aspect they're talking about. I think one time I got feedback saying, this is wrong, uh, this is not correct. And it, I'm like, for one week I didn't do anything because I wasn't sure <laughs> what does that mean? Anyone else would like to share something? Okay, if not, then I'll hand it over back to you. Awesome. Uh, so thanks everyone for the discussions on feedback. Uh, it's really nice to see and to hear some of the different points that you all bring up with this. Uh, so the next section, which has migrated all the way down to line 187, uh, is we're just looking at the vision and value exchange. And part of our goal here is that we're asking you basically just to spend a little bit, bit of time looking at what the vision was when you thought about things, you know, four months ago when we started uh, versus now. Uh, and so what is your, important to you in your project now? And what difference do you think it will make for your community? And then also to think forwards. Uh, so we'll be pre presenting next week and there's a potential to even ask people for volunteers or say, you know, here's how you can join or here's how you can help out. And as part of that, it's really important to share what the value exchange is. So what will you be getting out of it and what will they be getting out of it if they're contributing to you or if they're involved? Um, and so we have several question prompts. It's another uh, silent written exercise. First is about the vision and project. 
So difference from your vision, uh, think about why your project is important to you. Then the value exchange, what kind of things do you give to other people? What things do you get back? Is that balance right? And how does it fit in with your vision? Uh, and so we have some places where you can write this down. This is right now about line 210, but you don't have to share this. If you would rather write this down um, or just think about it, then that's fine too. But equally, you're welcome to share it in the document. And, and so we will just mute for three or four minutes and then uh, come back to it and share any reflections we may have.
Okay, folks, uh, since we are approaching uh, about half an hour for the call, uh, it's probably, even though I can see some more typing and I'm loving seeing the typing come in, so definitely keep, keep, keep on. I'm just going to open up the mic if anyone has any reflections they'd like to share. And again, this is totally optional, but if anyone has any thoughts that they found interesting at this point. I see so much wrapped typing that I'm just going to assume you all are getting down your ideas, which is great. Um, I think we are moving on possibly to another set of breakout rooms. Uh, and Movika, I'll hand it over to you in a moment. I just want to share one quick thought, um, which is we have uh, seven breakout rooms set up and three of those are written. Um, we haven't made any rules for how one would do the written presentation. So I think the breakout rooms are actually going to be two people this time. And my suggestion would be spend about a minute just agreeing with your partner um, in the written rooms how you want to manage it, whether you want the presentation to be spoken and then the feedback to be written or whether you want everything to be written. Um, and also in this case, I think we'd value the feedback for or less about how it worked and what the best way to take these forwards would be. Uh, but anyway, over to you, Malvika. I hope you're not still eating cake. <laughs> I still have a bit left, uh, but I'm happy to discuss how the breakout room will go. Um, in this point, I will ask you to bring back the two by two paradigm for feedback and please keep it to yourself. You don't need to write it in the notes. You're making this note for yourself so you can at the end of the presentation form uh, proper feedback for your partner. So coming back to the timing, everybody uh, would have about four to five minutes for presentation. It's okay to keep it shorter for today, but uh, more focus on the feedback you, you're seeking from your partner in the room. If you have like specific place where, where you would like um, other folks in the room to focus on, let them know before you start. Uh, you will have about two to three minutes for a room. We should send a um, broadcast at the middle of the call uh, where you would know how to move on to the next person. So everybody have chance to present and talk about. Um, make sure that the presentation is not as important today as the feedback part. So don't worry if not everything is done or everything is not completed. So we will give you 20 minutes, again, four to five minutes for presentation, some discussion at the end, also come back and discuss uh, what you are doing. Everything's clear? Before we send you off, please invite us into your room if you feel like uh, we can give you another kind of feedback that you're looking for. All right, uh, so Yo, I think you're ready to go. Oh, okay. Um, just so that you'll know, if you are in room one, uh, that's Stephen Ismail, you're written. Uh, room three, Neha and uh, Pauline is written. And the final written room is Danny and Harriet. Um, and as usual, put your hand up if you have any questions. Um, Malvika, I've assigned you to a room as well. I hope that's okay, because we had uneven numbers of people. Absolutely. All right. right, you're off. See you soon. 20 minutes total. No. Yeah, we did. So now we're okay. recording him back. All right. So um, coming back to the feedback, I really enjoyed the room that I was in and uh, makes me feel like, wow, these people are doing cool stuff. Does anyone want to share, applaud their uh, partner and any good insight that they had from the feedback or something in that direction? Stephen, uh, would you like to share something? Okay, I see your chat. Okay. Uh, if someone couldn't give feedback to their partner and if they feel comfortable doing it in the main room, I would also 
invite them to share some thoughts. Um, I was just thinking that when you have a really short presentation and even like a short question and answer period, it's helpful actually to say what kind of feedback you want. So I specifically asked like, how can I make it shorter? Cause mine was too long. <laughs> Okay, so we have about five minutes here. Uh, how do you think we can? So I'm going to just read out Stephen's uh, comment. Feedback helped me understand that I need to put more background in the project that are more specialized, uh, but hard to do in five minutes. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I also definitely think that adding a background story is a lot more important than the actual output that you're building because these are the relatable things where people can uh, join your forces, right? Like they can come and collaborate with you. Um, I always find it heartwarming knowing where people come from, what really motivates them to build what they're building. So uh, yeah, my, my advice to all of you would be that we know that you've worked very hard and there's a lot of output that you have developed, but people are more interested in understanding your experience, uh, where you come from, but also what you've learned and what you've gained and how you invite them to work with you. So probably product is not as important as the, the project and your bigger vision, as we were discussing before you went in the breakout room. Okay, shall we wrap up? Right, uh, this has been really delightful as always. Um, so for next week, uh, tr try and keep under five minutes. I will get my um, alarm clock out and I will be the bad cop. Movika is really nice and I'm gonna be like, brip, 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 brip. Uh, I don't know how that comes out on Otter. That was me making a chiming sound. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, if we get to five minutes, uh, but I think would be great. Um, I would also recommend using your own mobile phone to time yourselves uh, for next week when we're doing the presentations, but invite your, in, invite your grandpa, invite your best friend, invite anyone you want to come along to see what you've been doing. Um, everyone is really welcome to see this because we are proud as hell of you and you all should be proud of yourselves as well. Um, don't forget to look at the assignments we discussed in the last few weeks. Uh, even if you don't have time to do them right now, maybe revisit them in a few weeks as well, especially stuff like the Mount of en Mountain of Engagement and the um, value exchange as well. Because this is definitely something we still think about as a team, like how we can make sure that we're getting as much value for people um, and how to engage people as well. I, oh yeah, uh, blogs. So we will also ask you to think about whether you could maybe write a quick blog about your project that could go on the Open Life Science website. Uh, we sort of aimed to do this for OLS1 and really didn't manage. So you helping to push this forward for us would be really great. <laughs> um, I think I'm just about done, except I really want to say how freaking proud I am and excited for graduations. Uh, Malvika, anything you want to add? No, oh, everything's covered. I am also very delighted and look forward to all the graduation calls next week. Okay, um, so this is our last cohort slash practice call and we have graduations left and see you soon. <laughs>